Hi, I'm Josh Lambert, a product manager here at GitLab. And today we'll be doing a walkthrough of setting up GitLab highly available and with Geo, which is our product for improving performance across the world, as well as also having a disaster recovery site in the event that you might need one. First, just to quickly mention, this is a long video. Uh, so uh, I did it a couple of days ago and captured the whole process and it took right around two hours from start to finish. Uh, we'll go through and set up a multi-node primary cluster. Uh, note that it doesn't actually fully set up if we wanted to go through and set up the rest of these things, the third industry, CI, object storage, and true HA, that will take additional time. Uh, we have everything HA except for Giddily, and we'll talk through that more in the process. We did also set up Geo, though, as I mentioned before, over in uh, Sydney, which is great, and that process was working. Uh, overall, I would say it's a time-consuming and frustrating experience. It shouldn't take two hours to get a simple three-box setup of GitLab. I'm going to experience challenges uh, throughout the process. If I hadn't been relatively familiar with this and I tried to delete as much GitLab experience memory as I possibly could, um, it would have taken significantly longer. Uh, so when we did get stuck, I, I was able to unstick us just by virtue of having done this a few times. Uh, so um, you can see some uh, notes there. You'll certainly catch some of the notes further in the process, but the charge registration process was problematic. I still haven't received a license three days later. Uh, finding the right installation documentation wasn't easy, or the best installation documentation, I should say. Um, and that document had a lot of problems in it and was very old. Uh, and in general, I would say the experience doesn't feel like uh, someone's looking after the complete end-to-end -end experience and to make it delightful. Um, so. That said, uh, we knew this is going to be a challenge and we're focusing on just in these areas in 2020. And this is exactly why improving the end-to-end -end experience that we're doing these walkthroughs. We're gonna do them at least every three months, hopefully much sooner. And we expect to see significant improvements from video to video to video in the time it takes to configure, how much we're able to configure, as well as what the kind of problems we encounter uh, in the process. So it's a great way to baseline the process and make sure we're improving it and tracking our improvements uh, repeatedly throughout this year. We have opened up uh, follow-up issues for all the problems occurred. I, I, I note them in the next video, the next slide. Um, we're already planning to address many of these areas in 2020. So we have a growth team who is looking after the trial experience. They'll be focusing on improving that, that, that process. We're, hiring a full-time tech writer just to improve the installation documentation and operations documentation, which would be a significant help. Uh, we're also, which potentially is the biggest help of all, is in developing an, an official Terraform script. So we won't need a 30-page document that walks you through the nuances of setting up every little checkbox in Amazon to accomplish this. Rather, you would give us what you want us to configure as far as number of nodes and, and where you want them. And the Terraform script will simply go make that happen. Uh, and, and based on inputs like how many users you want, it can make educated recommendations on the architecture and number of nodes and which node types you need. So that should simplify a lot of this process. And we're really pushing hard to try and get that done. As you can see from this experience, it's really important. We're also doing a similar effort to these walkthroughs, which is our UX baseline, which is our UX team doing these walkthroughs, largely end to end, again, to try and make sure we have a connected, good experience. Down below is the document that we use to capture uh, the notes in, in case you wanted to open it up. And here are the issues that we have opened in the process of installing GitLab. So again, we're gonna go ahead and we will have a goal of installing a fresh GitLab instance from scratch, highly available multi-node, in this case two, with Geo. We will use the recommended installation method of an on-US GitLab derived package. Um, and we will also be using the official GitLab instructions for installing on AWS. And again, uh, this will take a few hours. In this case, it took us two. Uh, so again, uh, Please uh, enjoy uh, and, and the unvarnished installation experience of a product manager attempting to install GitLab HA with Geo. Thanks. Uh, and again, we're looking forward to improving this for all of our customers. Hi, 
I'm Josh Lambert, a product manager here at GitLab. And today I'll be taking uh, a walkthrough of setting up GitLab as if I were a customer. Uh, and in particular, one who wanted to set up a relatively small HA instance of GitLab, highly available, right? That we have multiple nodes, as well as one that has our geo integration turned on. Uh, this would be uh, a feature where your users who might not be in your particular location, let's say we're based here in the United States, we have some folks over in Australia, um, they can have a node over there and get some increased performance, as well as we could also potentially fail over there if our particular uh, availability zone, for example, uh, had a problem. Uh, so uh, that's our goal here is to get set up. Um, we're, you know, we're a new customer, wanted to try GitLab. Let's go ahead and do that. Um, and we'll walk through the process. So. Again, our goal here is to do it from scratch with HA and Geo. Uh, we'll use a recommended installation of Animus GitLab, but we'll follow through the process. Um, we'll also land eventually on the official AWS instructions, um, but we'll first do some Google searching and make sure that uh, we can have find a happy path there and a good guided path there from our standard pages. Uh, just to be clear, this will probably take a few hours uh, and um, we, we, we know that's a pain point, we're working on it, we're working to have a Terraform script, uh, but today there is no official automation, uh, uh, you know, Terraform or Cloud Formation available. Um, and so uh, this is a good baseline of some potential frustrations our customers may have uh, along with this process. So with that, we'll go ahead and get started. We also will log any particular challenges that we might have so we can improve the experience for those who come after us. So let's jump in and, and get started here. Uh, we'll do it on AWS, as I mentioned, uh, and we'll also uh, have some notes here to take. So let's get started. Let's, let's first uh, just go to gitlab.com. And let's, let's take a look. So I don't, I kind of want to install it. I don't see a download page. Um, so nothing up here that's really clear on, on how to download. That's, that's a bummer. So I have to click the call to action. Uh, I didn't necessarily want to do that as a, as a customer I, I, or a potential customer. I, I tend to uh, usually try to, you know, uh, do it as, as frictionless as possible. Um, but let's see. Okay, so I click get, get, get free for 30 days. Um, it's asking me how I want to try it. We have a SaaS cloud version. Uh, for me, I want to I host this myself on AWS. Uh, and so it looks like download and install is a good option here for GitLab self-managed. Um, all right, some of the wording might be interesting. I don't really think of downloading GitLab onto AWS, but we can maybe improve that uh, a little bit later. So let's have a first note um, here, get a little bolded list. Sorry, usually this uh, is a larger pain for me. Uh, there we go, all right, so Download and install language could be improved on CTA landing page. Call to action landing page. I forget what it's called, the get started one. We'll click this. We're taken to a form. I am Joshua Lambert. We'll put my work address in because they might be sending me an email. So I have to do that. I really don't feel like giving my number. So I'll try and avoid that. I don't want any phone calls. I if I can just leave that blank. Let's see. No, I cannot. It must. Wait, what? Oh, okay. Let's see if they can. That works. Will be the United States. Will be in Alabama. We have one customer. No questions. Get started. Okay. I have to click on the email communication. All right. I get additional instructions in my mailbox shortly. Let's see. Okay, let's see if we get these. So far, I haven't. Hmm. All right, haven't gotten it yet, so that's a, that's a bummer. Um, let's see, email. Registration link is slow. We'll, uh,
we'll move on here because it's still not coming through. So that's all right. Let's uh, try this. We'll just do GitLab, Amazon. Oh, we have a marketplace offering. That's cool. Just click on the first link here. GitLab CE. No reviews. 234 external reviews. Um, generally, generally pretty good from G2. Ah, different website. Okay. Um, that's relatively recent. I happen to know that Tallout 7 was released two days ago. I wonder why our AMI is out of date. That's like community edition AMI. I'll take a note of that. Not by a lot, just two days. But I, it should be automated, so that's, that's curious. Um, but this is, uh, I, think, I think, just a one, one instance here. Um, so, and I, I want high availability, so I'm not sure that's the best option for me. Let's see what else GitLab's got going on here. We have five user pack. All right, um, let's click on that. No database reviews, a little more expensive. Also on 12.6.3. Okay, so it's actually both the CE and the ultimate. It's outdated. Uh, yeah, okay, so it's just an AMI. All right. Oh, we have some installation instructions. Interesting, the installation instructions link back to setting up high availability, which is very different than not the AMI product. But right, we have it on this page, which, which is pretty handy. That looks like what we're actually want to do, which as opposed to this, which appears like it would give me a single node. Um, yeah, a single T2 large, which is not what I wanted to do as a customer. I wanted to try and find a, a high availability installation. Um, so that's, uh, that's not great. Let me check back in my email, see if we got any further on our email. Looks like we got one message. It is downloading. All right, it's uh, still going. I use Mac mail for Gmail, so it's not the speediest, but generally doesn't have this much of a delay. So we'll, we'll, we'll continue on here. So we, we ended up on some instructions for GitLab HA. That seems promising. Uh, we did follow through the registration process. Um, Hmm. And we are now uh, kind of at an impasse here. We lucked out into this, but it's not really clear how it had gotten here if I didn't happen to click on that link. Let's just try GitLab HA. Well, that takes me here. That wasn't really totally expected. Huh. Um, let's try this. That could be some of my own sort of history there. GOHA configuring GitLab for scaling availability. Availability. All right, this looks good. A whole bunch of content here. A whole lot of stuff. Not really clear how I get there. Uh, we have package product. We have HA instructions. Scaling and high availability. Wow. Yikes. All right. I not really clear how we would edit here otherwise. Um hmm. Okay. <sighs> not really clear how to get onto the AWS HA installation page. Ah. We got an email just now, a minute ago came through. We got two of them at the same time. Apparently, I've already registered before. 
So I'm getting a message that looks like this. So that's all right. We'll, we'll reply back and say, uh, please get a new trial. Okay. All right. We got two emails. Oh, wait. We got three emails. So we got we got this one, which is already been used for a free trial. That's fair. We got a second one, which is the same message, but sent a minute later. And then about the same time, I got a third one, um, which, which, which apparently is an error. Uh, okay. So I will say, it seems like there was an error in generating my trial license key. Okay, so, but I don't really know how this process works. Um, it, it's possible that they saw that it may have been a human on the other end of this thing somehow, since I didn't, since I already registered once and noticed out the gitlab.com email address and just pushed it through. Um, but either way, we still don't have a license key, which isn't great. Um, but we did get a download link. So let's click that and see if that gets us anywhere else. Okay. So that takes us to our installation page. And this is going to tell us to download a non-US package as a recommended installation. So we could do this. We could go over to Amazon and we could, uh, you know, basically spin up our own EC2 instance and go through all the process. Um, but if you, I happen to know if you scroll down, you can get this, which, which tells you about AWS. Now, interestingly, this takes you to the AWS HA page, which, um, it's sort of odd because you would think it might tell you about the marketplace's offerings, maybe not, but also we, we have an EC2 AMI, which would be really easy. So for example, when, it, when, when this message pops up here, if you click on this, it takes you back here, which is sort of, you don't really know we have an AMI. You'd have to know if you pop over to EC2, now, it seems like we have some old stuff lying around here. Well, that'll be interesting to see what's 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 going on. Um, to our running instances, if you click on launch instance, you can actually go to the marketplace, of course, and and, and find something, um, which is the CE edition. But we also should have community MIs as well. Now they're a little harder to find, but we just launched twelve out seven. But Nami has, oh, here's, okay. So here's 12.7, so we do, we do have them. And here's our EE version. Now, again, the, the marketplaces weren't updated, which is interesting. So, um, I think it came in what, like maybe five to 10 minutes afterwards. Let's make sure we take some notes here, make sure we track all this stuff. Can I just ask words, trial, or just on multiple emails? Uh, two telling me I already registered. Third with license, but had an error. Okay. Um, all right, and so we, we, we've noted that the uh, marketplace image is old. 
And we do have the community versions are up to date. Well, the community marketplace AMIs are up to date, which is interesting. All right, so that, that you know, if you're doing a single installation, the AMI might be interesting to, for, for folks to use. Um, you can reference the AMI ID and just basically just get started really quickly. Um, obviously, you can also get started very quickly with the marketplace as well um, by just clicking on the five user pack and getting going. But again, we want to do high availability, so it doesn't really apply to us. But it is unfortunate that there's no real way to know that we had AMIs available um, <clears throat> or that we had the marketplace offering. Um, and because you take it directly to the, the HA page. And beyond that, of course, you had to know um, right? No way to know of AMI page. Had to scroll down for Amazon page, which links you back to just the HA documentation. And then the HA documentation. <laughs> Links you to you know, links you back to install for single node instances. You miss you probably won't know we have an AMI and or marketplace offerings. Okay, so um, the trial experience so far not awesome frankly, uh, but, but we ended up here, um, I think by Google search actually, um, and of course off the, off the AWS page, but you had to know about it. Um, so we're here, let, let, let's, let's go forward. And uh, so I think it's about as good as we're gonna get um, as far as installation pages, but clearly we have some room to improve there. So, all right, so we know we don't want a single node. We, you know, we say, say we have over 300 users or we just have a, have a business continuity requirement that we have to have high availability. So we'll proceed. All right, so uh, we can use the many services that are configurable with HA, that's great. Go through busy HA setup, configure a VPC, that's great. Subnets, RDS, awesome, elastic cache, fantastic. Requirements, we have an AWS account, we're logged in. Um, We'll, we'll, we'll be able to manage an SCH key, I think. It's architecture. Let's see here, we got an ELB that makes sense to load balance. Um, we have an internal Giddly scaling group, a runner spawner, oh, we're gonna, okay, cool for CI and a secondary app server. Okay, cool. Um, we'll have RDS running and we'll have Redis going. Awesome, and you can have this in two different availability zones, which is great within a region. And then we'll use S3 for a number of buckets. Awesome, well that, that's a really good document. Um, costs, okay, great. I'm not gonna worry about that right now. All right, so the first thing we need to do, it seems like we need to create a new IAM role. So we'll open up this page. Whoops, it, it did not link out, which is odd. Huh, okay, uh, on AWS docs page, Link didn't spawn a new window, even though it seemed like it should. The icon. Okay. All right, so we'll open this in a new tab. We'll check this in over here. Whoops, it's fine, I missed the window. Um, we'll just go to the IAM section over here. So IAM, there we go. Uh, great, so we have a couple of roles. New role by something, AWS service EC2. Hmm. Oh, quick create role. Now, I am not an AWS expert. I do not see an ability to create a role. Maybe because this took me to me. Oh, go to create a role. Here we go. I'm gonna pick EC2. Click next for permissions. I'm gonna choose full access. 
Okay. And then we also want to do S3 full access. Okay, cool. That's nice. Uh, click next permissions. Well, tags is next. Let's just put uh, owner Josh Lambert. Click review, role name, GitLab admin. Oh, someone already followed these instructions a while ago. I'll call this GitLab admin Josh. And we will create the role. Wow. It's a, it's a heck of a lot of roles. never been used all right well i think it's the same thing we'll, we'll, we'll clean so yeah i delete it i just created it all right we're not gonna make a total mess in here okay so it already exists it's what we want that's great now we need to create a vpc for our gitlab cloud infrastructure we'll go back to uh i think it's under what vpc i think right um Yeah, interesting, it doesn't actually tell you a link to that. Oh, it does, there it is, great. Um, what does this do? Regions, okay, it's just telling you what the regions are. That's fine, we can, we can guess at some regions here. All right, select your VPC from the left menu and click v create VPC. Uh, select your VP, oh, this, got it. ECS website. Let's delete this. Oh, uh, okay. Well, maybe delete that later. <laughs> okay, so I took a opportunity there to clean up the account, so it's it's all been refreshed up, and we can continue. So what we've done here to pick back up is we have our EC2 instance role and profile. If we hop back to IAM, we can see that we have our role set up for GitLab admin with the EC2 full access and the S3 full access. So that is done. And now we're moving on to VPC. So we'll go click on VPC. And we will make, uh, let's see, so let's create VPC. So I'll click on yours, click on create VPC. It says create GitLab-VPC, we will do so. We're gonna give it a class B. Tennessee as default, that's great. We have created a VPC. All right. Select subnets from the left menu, fantastic. And we'll just cut and paste here. We'll pick our VPC. We'll pick availability zone. Wow, that's a lot more than I remember. We'll pick AZ6D. Uh, and I think we're good. All right, so we need Let's see here. It wants a public and private, probably internal and external. Okay, that makes sense. All right, so, so we'll pick one A and one B here, just to make it easy on ourselves. So actually, let's pick D and let's pick E and F, because that may be less likely to be full. Sometimes A and B can be sometimes quite full. All right, so we'll pick a block here for the first one. What they recommend. Just a class C on zero, zero. Click create. Okay. We'll close that. We will create another subnet. We shall call it GitLab private. It will be in our VPC. We will pick availability zone, the same one. So E. And you'll pick the setter block. Oop. I grabbed the wrong setter block there. This is just one. Oh, 
slash 24. It'd be kind of nice if we had the slashes. Okay, to make it a little easier to cut and paste for everyone involved. Close that, create another subnet. There we go. In our VPC, now this is the other VPC, so we're gonna pick one F. This is gonna be slash 24 for two. Click create. We'll make one more subnet. One F. And that's zero three. Okay. All right. So we have our four subnets, internal, external, across two AZs. That makes sense based on our diagram up here, right? Um, we're going to have a internal, external subnets. Okay. We need a route table. So let's go ahead and click on route table. Mm, we have one, it looks like, maybe with our VPC by default, um, potentially. GitLab public. Choose our VPC, click Create. Okay. Yeah, interesting. It's already a table existing. Okay, well, let's keep going here. Internet gateway, create gateway, GitLab gateway. Sounds good. Detached, let's attach to VPC. Click on attach, there we go. All right. Now we have to go back to route tables from the left menu to configure our subnets. Okay, select the routes tab. I feel like we want this one to be main. But did I miss that step somewhere? It's in, it's in the same subnet. Huh. Interesting. Let's continue on. I only see one, one VPC. It's not the main VPC. Uh, let's add a note here, in case you don't forget. Uh, there is a blank named route table that seemed to be created by default in my VPC instructions. All right, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and delete it. Doesn't seem to be, this is the full local subnet. Uh, doesn't, Huh. Uh, weird. We'll 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 leave it there for now, I guess. Actually, all right. Okay, we have route tables. We selected GitLab public. We need to hit edit, add a route. This is gonna be our default route out to the Internet Gateway. Oh, that's nice. Okay. That looks correct. It's active. Well, maybe they didn't save it yet. Okay, now you need a public, the public routes. So you wanna choose, oh, submit associations, whoops. Edit some associations. We want to associate the two public. Should be these two. Click save. Okay. Now we're done with that. Let's create the security group. Well, this is yeah. This is this goes nowhere and does. Uh, okay, so it's. I think since we had the two private ones in there, it just got dumped by default. Okay. 
we'll keep on going. Uh, security groups. Uh, that's our default security group. We'll make a new one, it seems like. We'll call it GitLab. And we'll choose our VPC. Uh, well, I think Paul, the public security group, I think. Maybe give it, maybe try the default. Yeah, doesn't have to, but we kind of give you a lot of examples here. Uh, otherwise, so maybe we should continue. Um, all right, so we did that. Create it. Doesn't say hit create. All right, well, you know, it's taking a bit longer than it would normally, but we're, we're making some good notes in these instructions, so that's good. So, let's see here. Yeah, I want to go in and we want to set inbound rules. I think this, the UI may have changed since this last was updated. So you want to just pick HTTP. HTTP, HTTPS, and SSH. OK. That seems like it's all we need, right? Yeah, anywhere. Well, weird. Save rule. Oops. we got to add some more of them. We can add them here. So we also want to add HTTPS, which is 443. As everybody knows, interesting. It defaults back to custom, huh? SSH 22. And for now, we'll let SSH go through. And you actually want to, because obviously a lot of traffic for Git traffic goes over SSH. So uh, we have 80, 443, and 22. We will click Save. We have that done. And oh, now we're on to RDS. We're already setting up our database. Cool. Um, let's see here. For our database server, we'll use RDS, which offers AZ redundancy. Okay, so we have to go navigate to RDS dashboard. Okay, uh, RDS. We don't put a link here, but yeah, it's probably fine. I, it's kind of, I, people are probably doing the same thing I am, and it opens up over here. It's not not super helpful. Okay, so RDS. Wait, what? Navigate to RDS dashboard and select subnet groups. Okay. Give it a name. Give what a name? These are from a long time ago, clearly. We will delete these. Okay. Do we have any bases left? No. All right, <laughs> good. Whew. We have a bunch of snapshots. Holy smokes. All right. Back to. Subnet groups. Clearly, I didn't clean up everything. <laughs> um, all right, so I, I don't get it. I guess you want to create a DB subnet group. It doesn't say so. All right, I'll give it a name. Okay, yeah, so it really it does mention created here. Well, We'll have RDS subnet group. And we have one VPC, add all subnets. Really? Oh, OK. OK, yeah, got it. Ooh. Uh, oh, it tells you. Nice. You don't want one and three left, because I'll say it doesn't give you the name. So we're going to have the two public ones, which is zero, which makes sense. It's the first two we created, we alternated. One and three, that's done. That looks, that looks correct. Click create. All right. Ooh, now they got to create the database. Oh, interesting. This still says 
Now, it does say 9.6. I'm going to install 11 just for fun. Um, we do support 10 and 9.6, and we just add, we're just adding support for 11 right now. Um, and it's passing our CI, so it should work. So I'm going to try 11, and we'll just see what happens here. So we'll go a little bit off, off the documentation, but I want the most recent version. Um, that's that still had some time to kind of get some testing. So we'll go back to the databases section here. We'll click create database. We want interesting. What's easy versus huh? Yeah, they mentioned a lot of stuff. Um, mention easy versus standard. I guess we'll take a little bit of a picture here just so folks have an idea what we're talking about when we go back and do this. All right, so um, we do support Aurora, by the way, for folks who are interested, but this instructions tell us to create Postgres, and so we'll do Postgres. And it's a false to 11.5. All right, cool. We'll, uh, we'll roll with the default. Oh, 12 is in the preview environment, interesting, okay. Um, we'll pick production, we the, the license model. I don't see a license model. Huh. Jeez. Holy smokes. Whoa. It's a lot of it's a lot of uh, options there. Okay. So um Okay, it does mention a choose production. Cool. Settings. We'll call it um Uh, all right, GitLab DBHA. Now we're, we're just gonna stay with the exact same things that they opted for to keep things easy. Um, I wonder, hmm, whoops. Let's try that. It can tell us what our password is. Instance size, T2 medium. All right, now obviously you can pick whatever you want. Oh, you, you can't pick uh, T2 medium. What if you do that? Did you pick it? No, it does not. Interesting, okay. There's no longer a thing for T2 mediums. Well, this is just test, and so it's not anything big. The smallest it seems like it'll accept is a, uh, M4. Let's make sure we have our uh, update instance types. No more T2s. Um, it's also standard classes. Yeah, this is all really changed. Um, we'll just do provisions on purpose. Oh, all right, we'll do provisions by up then, I guess. Let's try to save a little bit of money here, even though it's only be running for a short period of time. Multi AZ. Oh, cool. It defaults to on. Cool. Great replica in a different zone. I don't see that option. Interesting. Maybe it defaults to that option. I don't think we need storage auto scaling. Um, it doesn't really give us a default size that I can tell. All right, connectivity. We have our that group. Let's see RDS group. That's good. Public no. Existing. Oh, a security group. I don't, do we want the default security group? Ah. Great new. Right? Yeah. New and delete with the create a new security group. Okay, we'll call it GitLab RDS SG. Database ports probably fine. Password authentication is fine. Database name. Well, we want GitLab HQ production. Yeah, that looks right. 
Okay. So there's a whole, wow, there's just a ton. We'll leave the rest of the stuff blank. Well, default, rather. And we'll click on Create Database. Now, GitLab does... What? Uh, uh, I think we just did this. Let's just update now, I guess. Yeah, sure. Oh, it's not running yet. That's really strange. That you create a new database and it doesn't come with a new Huh. All right. Well, let's let's it's creating. We'll come back to this. I mean, obviously, we'll, this will only be running for a couple hours, so it's not open, not that big of a deal. But um, RDS with elastic cache is up next. So we'll come back to it. I mean, if you want to, you can fiddle with the certificates, but it's not critical to getting up and running. So Redis with elastic cache. And go find elastic cache. There it is. Okay, Redis. Oh, subnet groups is first. Well, we already have some. We'll delete these and start off new. Create group. Lab Redis group. Lab Redis group. Pick our VPC. Uh, now, which AZ? Does this thing support? High availability. Um, let's see what it says. Do a cluster or not? Even without a cluster, you can do a multi availability zone. All right, we'll do E. Send that ID. Uh, boy. That's wrong. That's the not the right one. That's the internal. Okay, that looks good. Let's pick F. I'm guessing the second one is correct and it's not first one okay we have one and three that's good and we click create awesome redis create give the cluster a name we're not gonna do cluster mode um or I don't think we really need it. We're already doing multi easy multi easy failover, so that should be fine. Um, for the version, we'll pick the default. Sure, port seems good. Wow, that's a really old version. Um, number of replicas. Okay, multi easy failover. Cool. Uh, Let's pick the other zones, right? One E, I go replica two is one F. Uh, I don't think we need it to be large. Oh. Okay. That's how oh, we can go on T2. We'll pick up we'll T2 medium. This is not going to see a whole lot of load. So we can save a couple bucks here. What do we recommend uh, out of curiosity on this? We don't tell you. Okay. Huh. Hmm. Let's think about that. Uh, for Redis, maybe recommend an instance size. We do elsewhere. Okay. Did that. We want to. Pick the security group. Uh, anyway, was that the name? Did I type it in wrong way up here? Where did we cut our security group? Ah, we didn't give you a name. Interesting. We tell you an example name in Elastic Cache, but we don't tell you that name. 
when creating the SG. Okay. We'll use that security group. Last settings default. And we'll click create. Okay. Yeah, see, this would really be a reference at the top. Okay, go to our instances under EC2. And select, wait, what? Let's navigate to our EC2 security groups. Uh, okay, so it's gonna be under VPC, I think. Right, security groups. Copy the name of the security group we defined, which is GitLab. Select the RDS group, inbound rules. Edit. Postgres, wow, that's crazy. Paste the name under the source. Lab. It doesn't want the actual. Yeah, see, it wants the security group ID. All right, that's it. Now we get to add. Wait, what? Okay, because we deployed it right us into this group. We now have to add a custom TP, TCP rule. Oops. All right, so custom TCP 6379. Do we just use this the same like internal, like self referential? group here. I guess that works. Okay. Uh, EC2 now. Load balancer. Uh, here it is. Great load balancer, ALB. GitLab, we'll, we'll file everything here. The internet facing and the listeners section. I have one for HTTPS. Surprise, not the default. Um, in availability zone, select the GitLab VPC. Okay. And associate the public ones. Uh, Public, public, cool. All right, we've done all that. All right, now we need to uh, select the TLS certificate. We're gonna just request a new one. Uh, hmm. Yeah, TLS certs. Hmm. <laughs> well, let me do a quick check here. See if I have one of these control, what domains I have control over. I don't think any are on Route 53, so we'll have to use Google DNS for much of our stuff. Of course, if I go to Google DNS, uh, it's talking about the public DNS servers. 
<clears throat> uh, oops. Am I my wrong Google account? I think I have a few kind of junky domains we can mess up. All right, cool. Oh, yeah, we have a couple of kind of random ones, but we also have gitlabci.com. Cool. Um, so we'll call this the load balancer gitlab.gitlabci.com. That's pretty cool. We'll click next. We, can, we have control over DNS, so we can click on next. I don't think we need tags. Confirm and request. All right, so now we have to manage this over here. Uh, DNS settings. All right, so we're gonna have to add a C name record. With the name of this. Oh, that's cool. Kind of auto highlights. Did that work? It did. And then the value is this. Wait, is it the same thing? No, it, okay, that I didn't copy it correctly. All right. So there we go. It just auto highlights for you. That looks correct. ACM validations.abs. We'll add that. Oh, great. Google says that the uh, changes will take effect in the next 48 hours. Um, if that's true, we'll need to pause. Let's see, let's see if we can do a quick NS lookup here or something to this DNS name. I don't know if I could do a dig maybe. I think I forgot how to. Let's see here. Uh, got an answer. Hmm. Okay, well, it's pending validation. We'll click continue. All right, so we might be stuck for a little bit until this happens. Okay, so back over here. Okay, we should go back to our EC2 load balancer. Okay. Oh. I guess it, it's gonna make me wait until I have a certificate to give it. Huh. All right. We could use this DNS name instead. Uh, which is expired, it, it seems. So we can just delete that one. Okay, so we'll, we'll have to put us put this plan on a hold a little bit here as we wait for certificates come to come through. We could try and hit it with Let's Encrypt, um, but let me let me take a quick break while we figure out the certificate process and we'll be we'll be back once we have a certificate one way or the other okay so thanks for 
wading through the high availability uh, configuration. That definitely was a journey. Um, we'll be improving the documentation, of course, with those notes. And uh, we'll also, of course, be, as I mentioned at the beginning, working to automate and having a Terraform script to do that for, for everyone and have an official Terraform script so you can run a few commands and get a uh, reference architecture version of GitLab out of the box. Um, and uh, that will be a huge help uh, and will significantly shorten the time. So that's in progress now. Um, that said, let's continue on with our goals. We accomplished goal number one. We have a largely high available cluster. We talked a little bit about the current limitations of Giddily. Um, so yes, Giddily is a single node of failure, um, but the application nodes can all come and go as needed. And uh, as mentioned, we are working to have Giddily be highly available uh, and resilient in the summer of this year, 2020. So looking forward to that. Um, and you can follow along with, with Prefect if you like. Um, I can pull up here uh, this, this one right here. So check out uh, Prefect. You can check this out here and you can get more information um, as, as we go. Cool. All right, so with that, let's look at Geo. So we did this, we logged in for the first time. We're not gonna do runners, we're not gonna do backup for store. We got, you know, we got updating we'll to create a new AMI and things like that, so that's all fine. So this is also incorrect, right? Like, again, we're using an AMI base. So this doesn't make any sense to actually do because it will be lost. But, conclusion. Geo, great. Oh, I should mention, we also never got a license. So, um, since we didn't have a license, it will be sort of hard to actually utilize Geo because that's odd. All right, let's make a new section here for Geo. That's not very helpful. <laughs> So let's, let's, let's make a new section for geo. I'm gonna just start taking some geo notes here. Geo. All right, so. All right, so long story short, a couple hours later, I have yet to receive my license. Um, so the trial workflow is is not working for me. Um, the good news is, is that I, being a GitLab employee, am able to uh, generate my own licenses. So let me go do that over here, a different window. So bear with me, please, while I create a license quickly, which will have a short expiry. Okay, so I made a license, it expires tomorrow and it is for three users and it is for premium because premium is what is required to use Geo. So let's, let's go back here. Actually, while we're here, let's go load ourselves our license. So I think you load licenses under settings, I think. Wait, license, that, that would be where you Oh, you can start a free trial from right in here. Let's try that. I'm curious if this works. Let's try. Why is that grayed out? Like, can I not change that? Oh, that's not gonna work. I, I assume it'll email me my, my license. Huh. Interesting, let's take a picture of that too. Not related to Geo, but we'll keep it going. 
on the start trial button locks your admin email, which may be internal service account. Anything else? And also defaults to admin at example.com. Wait, now actually, I hope you have changed it. I, actually, I think we can change it. Maybe, maybe let's do that. So let's go, let's go back, close this. Um, I can edit my username. So settings. We'll do that. Whoops. I right, commit email. Hmm. That's weird. You can change your email, but oh, I need to enter my role. I am a product manager. Okay. Now, what if it that <laughs> you can change your email address? You can't change your commit your commit mail. Why? What the heck? Oh, wait. Oh, I can't. Okay, well, there's, there's no way that's getting to me because um, Amazon blocks out on SMTP. So that's not working. And one thing we're not doing right now is setting up uh, Amazon simple message service. So that's not, uh, not an option. Okay. So we will utilize my license I just created as opposed to continuing to play with the trial workflows, which while interesting are not proving terribly fruitful. So let's upload a license. We'll enter the key. There we go. All right. We have one day remaining. Great, and we're, we're ready to rock and roll. Okay, so number one, we got to the bottom of the HA instructions and it pointed me over towards Geo. So let's check out Geo. Okay, um, I'm not gonna watch the video. You can do it on your own. If you're interested, pause it now and go look at it. Um, but basically this is the idea. You have a primary and a secondary and you can mirror it. Funds, fun stuff. Okay, so requirements, firewall rules, geo tracking database, set up instructions. I think, so this is a lot of work. I think someone wrote a similar, this. Now, I don't know how you get, get here. Is it linked off of this? No. Um, hmm. Yeah, so you start here, but there's no links to get you here. Okay. Um, All right, let's just try stuff. Why not? Here we go. Let's let's just change into the box. We know it's cool. Now since wait. Oh, so this this can be fixed. Uh, it's not a fixing now, but you can you can as part of the auto scaling groups um, have a pre-configured SSH key. Uh, as part of the the, the, the user script, um, so that that does work. Uh, 
So um, just as a quick note, like if you if for some reason following this in this video as to how to set up your own instance, first, I'm sorry. Um, I, <laughs> we'll have a better video for you and better instructions. Uh, second, uh, uh, you can use that that user configuration over here, um, just over here in launch configurations. Uh, let's just uh, copy of it. I think it's a launch configuration. It might be in the AMI actually. Let's go look in the AMI. That'd be our EC2 AMIs. Actions. Usually there is a, um, oh, where is it? Is that user config thing or user script or startup script that runs and you can put it there. Um, I, we can look it up later, but it's, it's that, that's how you fix it. Um, because the SDH key gets configured on the instance start and randomly generated as part of the scripting as present all the instances that are all the, all the default AMIs. Um, so you can you have to override it afterwards with that post install step or post instance start step. But let us get into our instance. Let us run this command to make ours the primary node. We can also geo, so it says, cool. Well, here's the, in the exact order they appear. Okay. Well, let's see if this thing just finished. Saving primary geonode with name blah is another primary geonode. Okay. Oh, look at that. Interestingly, oh, okay. Huh. Let's make a note of that little bit um, directly after first setup it forward and showed strange errors. Cool, look, it's all it's all verified, it's all copied over. We're healthy, we're running 12.7.2. We have our uh, this internal URL is actually incorrect. That might be a problem, depending on. Uh, this is all going to shake out here, but let's go find our geo and our post. Okay, so we did that. Okay, so let's go find our RDS instance. Hello, RDS. Okay, so now we need, I forget how you do this exactly. We want to set up a read replica. Um, Does not we don't, we're not making it we're making a single geo node so that's one thing we're definitely doing um, and where should we put this let us put this in Sydney hmm. interesting we don't have a db subnet group I'll put it in A. I think we're needing a subnet group over there. So let's go find Sydney. Okay. Cafe yeah, feels like it's further away, that's for sure. Subnet groups. Create a DB subnet group. Oh boy, we need a 
We need a whole nother VPC. Okay. Um, since we're going single node, let's just try and do this. And let's make this really, really basic. Yes. Pick two A, just plug some of these. Uh, Source endpoints, doing source names, yes. What was that Nova for? Huh. Great VPC. Oh, we're using the wizard though. Mm. Okay. Well, I, I, we don't want to do that. All right. So now we have our VPC and our subnet. So now we should be able to create a DBSMA group. We'll call it. Geo GitLab Geo DB subnet into GitLab Geo VPC. Add all the things. We'll choose that. We have that. Oh. Sure. Hmm. At least two availability zones. Why? Why do you need, why do you need two? I only, only want one. A minimum of two is required. Uh, okay. This is an old, old thing it looks like. What do we have going on here in Sydney? A whole lot of nothing. Okay, great. Perfect. So let's open to see. Because I have not been in Sydney before. So, All right, so we have security. We have uh, our VPC session. VPC. Let's delete this VPC if we can, just to make things easier. Okay. Great. All right. So now we have one subnet, which is uh, a class B on 10.0.0.0. If we go back up to our VPCs, it's a class, oh, that's a class C, sorry. This is a class B. So we should be able to create a subnet. Uh, we'll call it GitLab private. Uh, I don't really know why it matters. Um, we'll call it, maybe it's called public two. I, I don't want, you know, whatever, public two B. Um, Cider block is that. Okay. So hopefully we have satisfied RDS subnet. Okay, cool. All right, now we may have to reload this page and make a new read replica. We want it in Sydney. <clears throat> Geo subnet. We'll put it into a not well, default is fine. We're just gonna have it all one big happy family there because you know, whatevs. Oh, let's call this Galab do we geo. Whatever, I'm not throwing some sensors to buy. Okay, cool. All right, so we have our read replica going somewhere. Where do you see that, out of curiosity? Ah, oh, there it is. 
Okay. So that will be happening, which is good. Uh, perform imusification manually as follows. Okay. You know what, for ease, we're gonna start from the AMI. It's not that much harder, we can make a snapshot later. But this is, this is in Sydney, okay. And we, let's go to RDS, I'm curious what it shows. Oh, what, oh my gosh. DPGO, creating, okay, cool, awesome. EC2, launch and instance. All right, we're gonna use the community of mice. We're gonna search for call.7.2. Here we go. We don't want CE. CE does not have what we need. We need EE. There she is. Okay, this thing can be small because it's going to be not very big. Well, let's just say we're very people, people there. GitLab Geo, there we go. Um, 2A, that's where we're going. Looks good, add storage. We're not gonna use external Giddly here. Again, we're not going for HA, we'll just keep this simple. We're focused on Geo, and you can do Geo HA for the second, for the other, for like the Geo cluster as well. But um, for the purposes of this, let's let's keep this simple. We're already at a couple hours of installation here. So let's, uh, let's, let's, let's move this along. We can, we can pick up the more complex ones next time. Let's launch. Oh, we don't have a key pair. GitLab AWS. We'll call it GitLab Geo because it's going to give us a different key. Okay, launch instances. Away we go. Okay. So that is going. Now, since you're not, since you're not gonna do a load balancer, we can also take advantage of our Let's Encrypt support. Um, so that'll make things much easier rather than having to deal with the whole like multi-hour Amazon validation process. Um, So once this thing pops up, you'll be good to go. Well, I'm actually a crown provides two of the hardest. We did that. That is done. Man, you can fit a database for replication. Uh, wh why? Uh, Ah, okay, we'll skip to the below, good. Okay. That's an interesting recommendation. I, I do see that sometimes, but from what I understand, it's uh, generally, generally frowned upon. Hmm. It's taken a while, man. Let's go check out how our database is doing while we're waiting. Okay, 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 jeez. Still creating. Uh, really small, like why is it, what, what's wrong? Hmm. 
Hmm. All right, well, clearly this is taking some time. Uh, let's go back to our instances. This is also taking some time. Hmm. Um, was 2A a bad idea? I don't expect operations like this to take quite so long. Usually also if, there's, if you're out of instances, they'll just tell you. Interesting. Oh, there we go. Cool. And we're now running. Now, uh, I said the, the launch wizard one. Whoops. Um, let me add that and add HTTP and add HTTPS. Save. Okay. All right. Still initializing. Um, we have a private DNS. Let's let's give you a public DNS. Magic IPs. Not sure why they're new. Uh, yep. Uh, nope. I wanted to associate, not allocate. We have one instance, so that should make it easy. Okay. So we have a public IP, public DNS. So if we were to SSH, I can like dash geo dot pem. Here, oh, it needs to be Ubuntu. Will it blend? No. Ah, that is the problem. Oh, that's kind of cool. Um, Come on, yay, yay. Okay, cool, we're up and running. Um, at this point in time, we should have GitLab installed. So now what we wanna do here is we want to set this up, well, I want to change this. So what we'll do, we'll set this up as uh, geo.getlab-ci.com. And I should just get the public IP here. Where is the Sydney? Let's register. That DNS name, cool. Okay, so DNS is getting propagated. By the time we are done here, we will be done. And instead of finding all of this stuff, let's just put it all here. So GitLab, you wanna take, okay. Roll, secondary roll, good. GitLab Rails DB password. This is everyone's fun, happy password. Let's see here, there we go. All right. Username is GitLab. I guess stick in the real post. This is when I get stuck waiting a little bit again. So let's see if we get back to RDS, if we have, have uh, some have started. And we're still creating, not awesome. Hmm. 
Is it that the security group doesn't allow it? It's a different VPC, like VPC pairing or something. Oz, RDS, wave replica. Okay, stream application. Uh, why? It should just work, oh, I think. All right, it belongs in the vents. Errors. Mm. That's not fun. Interesting, it's shut down. Okay, this is a more recent one. End of log. Okay. Um, RDS read replica archive is not yet downloaded. Hmm. Oh. Wait, what? Oh, interesting. Survey streaming right ahead log. No primary. That seems promising. You just need maybe you need to be patient. The other nice thing is that since you're not going through a load balancer, we're not getting our collections reset all the time. Okay, so we had some we had some errors. Oh, we have a port now. That's good. Um Then feel modifying. Okay, we can we can we can we can roll with this. Okay, so that's that goes there. I'm just trying to read and see if there's any kind of uh, 
security group for connectivity to set, but it seems like Amazon handles that on their side, which is nice. Okay, so in theory, in theory, that's all we have to do. Let's look up our, our Galileo-CI. Okay, that looks good. Um, you set, ooh, I'm glad we looked at this. Um, I don't know what that was. Oh, also this is like not comments, I guess. Maybe it is. I don't, I, 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 I don't know. This doesn't look good. Whatever that is, is strange. Let's save this and reopen it. Something is, something's going, something's doing weird stuff. Okay, so that's correct. That's correct. That looks good, that looks good, that looks good. And the DB name is, is the default, so that should be fine. Okay. We're doing stuff, that's good. We're available. Yes. Let's go back in the primary. Uh, interesting. Doesn't, doesn't really say the replication state. Don't know if that is good or bad. Um, where are we start my snapshot? Replication. I was in. Oh, must have must have taken a snapshot and transferred when we started. End of log. Okay, well, that's not the last thing I have in there. Um, so it says available. Let's go for it. So we should get a local Postgres hooked up because the tracking database. Uh, a lot of stuff happening here. The registry seems to be getting some changes. Don't really understand why. Well, let's encrypt. So, yay! Come on, let's encrypt. I'm not sure that registry is also doing let's encrypt. Oh, we have a lot of stuff happening here. Okay. We might be able to shut down the normal Postgres service. Now, well, again, use all, they use the tracking database, which you can see it doing right now, right here. Um, but I'm not sure if it, what happens if you try and drop the main Postgres or not. Because we have no need for the main database. That's obviously using external now, but. I'm not quite sure how those, those configuration settings interact. Now, hopefully we have connectivity between here and the root replica. I'm a little nervous of taking this long to run the migrations. So you're in the default security group. Um, Oh, 
all all default security group. I mean, it, it accepts everything from the security group. So I, I mean, I, it should work, I think. Okay. The instance is also in, oh no, the instance is in a different security group. Okay. So this is the VPC default. Let's change this. So we want is it five four three two? I think. I think so. Um, sorry, Postgres. There's Postgres. Five four three two from launcher zero one. That might do it. <clears throat> Yeah, there it goes. Cool. I forgot that we used a different, a different uh, security group for uh, by accident for the instance. Okay. Go back up here. Ah. Interesting. You say you say enter a new node. Okay. I guess this makes sense. You don't have someone randomly adding. You still need the Postgres database though. Oh, do you need JSON keys copy over? Oh, I think you do. Yeah, we're not doing high ability. That's fine. Okay, so my main question is do the copy of the JSON blobs. Can find out. So if you do geo.gitlab-ci.com, it does respond. Let's try our credentials. If this works, interesting. My guess is it can't decrypt the database. Um, the bug connection pool size. Whoa. Exception user user ID one. I got my username. Cannot execute update in a read-only transaction. Why are you trying to update?
don't understand why it's trying to update my failed credentials. It should know it's a secondary. We told it it was. Uh, it shouldn't also accept signups. Does it not know it's a secondary? Strange. I think we did this. This wasn't even included. And the other instructions. Fast lookup is required for geo. Huh. <sighs> Man. This does require changes in the primary. What else do we have to change in the primary for geo? Aha. Uh -huh. You you do need the dates on secret values. I, I feared you would. So I mean uh, I guess. Okay. <sighs> well, I'm done with Gilly. That's that's working. Um. Okay. Will be required to blah blah blah. Let's first. Um, yeah, let's first do this. Must be the same on all those. Yeah, kind of figured. Okay. Now let's go SSH into the original. There we go. Oh, wait, no. Yes. Wait. Okay, so we need to sudo cp and go on dash secrets dot json to here to mod this to our chone Ubuntu Ubuntu. Okay, I so I actually can get it. Okay. So GP get get my dash secrets dot JSON. Uh -huh, there it is. SFTP. Uh -huh. Oh. All right, so now we have to get the JSON file over. So I've kept the JSON file locally. We'll not put the JSON file where it belongs. Wait, what? Oh, I'm getting tired, I apologize. Right, JSON file, put live-secrets.json, there we go. I can put this H back in.
Okay. CP Caleb that's she was the chin slash is so well I'm just there actually. Same thing. All right. All right. Okay, we're good. That's done. So let's let's restart this now. I have a feeling this might. Ew. Uh, wait, what? Okay. I guess that makes sense. That will be hard. Wow, it's a, wow, the other thing that document is old that I found because a lot of this stuff isn't in there. I'm curious why it's not working. Why is it trying to write migrations? I don't think it knows it's the secondary. It should though. Yeah. Something's funky. Um, hmm. Okay, so we okay, so we, we we did step one. That is done. Great. Oh, are we are we can figure. Okay, we can, we can do that. I'm not sure why we reconfigure and restart. Okay. Oh, geez. There is um, quite a lot to do here. Holy smokes. Um, I'm not going to bother trying to rub. Uh, I guess we can actually. Um, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna fail over, so I'm not gonna worry about the primary SH case for now. We can kind of do that later. Let's say user facing thing.
we're worried about doing is I forgot where the settings were for this. This is what we need to do. Fast lookup. <clears throat> Actually, it doesn't make any sense through the SSH case because the, primary, the two primaries we have are different ones. So we can tackle that later. Uh, it can be in a separate video. Um, okay. Only needs to be unchecked on my primary node. Okay. And we have to edit the card. All right, well, let's get into the primary. <clears throat> Plus, we just gotta know which primary we're getting into. So, we want the other one, get my dash walls. Why? This one, okay. We know which one we're in because it's only one we actually can be in because the other ones have the wrong host key. And we don't really get into them. So that way we can isolate which one we're actually in, which is good because we will have to have it. Hmm. It's not in there. You always put them here. Okay. I wonder if that's going to prevent me from connecting. Okay, so good. Cool. The same thing on the secondary. It should be done. I'm not going to bother testing it because oh. Do you have to set this up somewhere? Settings. Common area settings network performance architecture. Oh, okay, cool. What is there? Yeah, I think that's done. All right, so we 
do this. Not doing that. This is. I don't understand. It just defaults to something, I guess. Big file. <laughs> Let's edit trick bins. We'll call it Sydney. I don't want I don't get we, we do this reconfigure go on a primary can we match okay Let's, let's try it out. Apply those changes. Go over to Geo. Okay. Should okay, we're up and running. It's good. Okay, new node. Sydney. Oh, yeah, we never had object storage. Hmm. Request fail with a 404. Oh no. Oh, I included an extra sec. Oh, darn it. Oh no. Oh man, these things have to make outbound web calls. Bet you. Clearly, is trying to. Let's try this geo check thing.
I think maybe I'll talk to each other externally. It's going to fail in connectivity. Damn. I fixed it last time by giving those instances the elastic IP. Maybe we just do it again. Let's just get two more elastic IPs as quick solutions. Not the shame. Instances. Okay. Boy. I wish you could do it from there. What the heck? I'm just associate all three of them. Okay. So I might believe I should be able to get external. Okay. Let's try. Yes. Okay. Let's try this again. Hmm. Huh, you need to disable. Oh. I, I thought I did that. All right, we did that, we did that. Oh, it's uncheck it. Okay, settings, network. I don't know why it's in a network. Okay, I'll turn that off. Whoops. Wait, what? This is the wrong instance. Okay, 
Let's see. <clears throat> okay. Cool. The same command here. I think we are getting there, which is super exciting. Okay. So if we go back into our instance and go to geo, it's healthy, which is good. We are synced, which is good. We do have to configure object storage. That's one thing I forgot to do um, when I set up HA. So we weren't actually done. Um, if we were to utilize anything that actually utilized LFS or job artifacts or things like that, it would have failed. So just we'll, we'll fix that next time around. But G was looking good. So yes, it's working. It was the outbound internet access. I'm registering the node. Cool. And here's our files. Okay, well, thank you everyone for listening. I'm sorry it took quite so long. Um, we got a ton of learnings out of this, so I appreciate doing it. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll continue to do this in the future, and we'll hopefully show progression on uh, improving a number of these areas, documentation, automation, uh, as two primary areas that need to get improved. Um, so thank you again, and uh, we'll see you next time.